If you feel like your drummer tracks and logic just sound like crap, then watch this video first. And I'm not even a drummer and I still get really good drum sounds. Not, not quite my tempo. So where do you start first? Well, let me show you. And soon enough, you're gonna be making drums that are so good that your girlfriend or wife will be turning their heads when they hear your drums. Ooh, are those your drums? So in order for us to start, we need a drum pattern. And unless you have one in your head to record, just go for it, that's awesome. But if not, and like most of us, where do you get ideas for drum patterns? I'm gonna show you two of my favorite ways. Number one is don't reinvent the wheel. Instead, look at what other drummers are doing, like the actual drum patterns they're creating. For instance, let's use the stem splitter tool in Logic and look at what the drums are doing in the song, Get Back by the Beatles. Notice how simple the drums sound here. And that was one of Ringo's greatest strengths too, right? Simplicity. Okay, so don't actually steal these sounds, but use these sounds as inspiration if you need ideas for patterns. Not necessarily the sounds of them, just the patterns, right? We're gonna figure out the sound problem in the final section of the video. So back to the stem splitter. Find literally any song you want and split the drum sem to just, just see what's under the hood, what's happening with the drums. So besides that, what's another way to find pattern ideas? There's actually an endless combination of patterns you can create with the Logic Pro Session Drummer. You probably figured I'd go there, but honestly, almost endless possibilities. And I'm gonna show you a really cool hack now that supercharges these drummer tracks even more. Let's take an example now, and let's say I have a bass part like this. Uh, and I'm looking to create a pattern with the, the Logic drummer track so they really fit together. So where do you start with an overwhelming amount of options, right, to choose from? So I'm gonna show you my preferred way to get things going here. Number one would be when you add a drummer track, so like up here, track uh, new session player SI and just add one of those drummer tracks. I already have one here. So when you open the drummer track, open the editor by going to this button here and what I suggest you do is if you have a groove instrument like bass or maybe it's your guitar, um, something that you want the drums to follow, this follow option down here, see it says follow bass. It would typically say nothing, but you can go, it would typically be like off, but you can go and actually choose any of your tracks in Logic. And I've chosen my bass here. So it actually shifts the way the Logic uh, drummer works so it grooves with the bass and it's it's pretty good. So I'm gonna show you just an A-B test. With it off, you just kind of have a simple pattern like this. Okay, and now with it on, so we'll go and follow the bass. You can see the kick drum has shifted to be that around those bass notes already. So let's have a listen to what that is. the kick drum is better placed with the bass drum, right? Or the bass guitar. So that really works. That would be my first thing. Second thing would be just to reduce the fill amount here and fill complexity. I find just default out of the box of Logic drummers just have too much fill and fill amount. So I, um, I just really take these down. Um, it's quite noticeable on some tracks that I get uh, from my students that there's just way too much dramatic fill between sections that don't need that. So um, bring that down. The third thing would be going to the detail section here and playing with the feel, the dynamics and the, the humanize uh, dials. Uh, in the back end, the algorithm is, I guess, loosening the playing up a little bit and also making it more dynamic. So play with that depending on how loose you want it to feel like this will essentially make it more human. Keep in mind like this one really important thing is if you're just listening to groove just with the drums like this, then like you can get so far down the rabbit hole where you're you're just, it's it, it sounds like a great groove, but as soon as you start bringing the music in, the groove totally changes, right? Because the groove has to work with the music. It's not just the standalone groove. So you could be listening to the drums all day and think they're awesome, but right when you put your chord progression or your music to it, the groove can fall apart because they just don't fit. So that's why the follow option is great. Or if you have a drummer, that's why they're great to pair. You need to pair groove with music. 
So now you know how to find patterns, but how do you know how to get great drum sounds? Because in reality, if your drums are just sounding like too amateur or beginner, it's often that you don't have the right sound. It's not because of your patterns. So pay attention in the next section. So let me break this down step-by-step step for you here. Um, we're gonna start by creating a custom drum kit. So you see I have my custom drum kit here uh, with Logic Sounds and an Indie Country Kit. So let's build you a custom drum kit. Now, it would be my uh, preference that you use um, actual drum samples that maybe you have recorded in the studio, or if you haven't had the opportunity to do that, getting just, just a drum library from the internet. So step one is add a software instrument. So track new software instrument. And over here uh, where it says ePiano, we're gonna actually change this to, you can search for drum machine designer. So I'm gonna go click this. Now it's, um, it's giving me this empty kind of box with all these pads here. So step three is now to populate these pads with your drum samples. So wherever you're getting your drum samples, for me it's Splice, I would drag in from the Splice app or from a Mac Finder window, dragging them right in, clicking and dragging them right in. And if uh, you don't have it, you can still use the Logic Sound. So I can still go over here and search the Logic Library. So I can search like a kick sound. Uh, and you see I have all these kick sounds. Uh, I can search snare sound or clap, you know, whatever keyword you want to add in. For the purpose here, we're going to do kick, snare, and, and hi-hats. One thing to keep in mind here is if you are using the Logic Sounds, if you search for kick uh, or snare or whatever, these are the same sounds that are being used for the Logic Drummer um, yellow tracks or um, look, any, any sounds that in Logic. These are just standalone one-shot samples if you just search for them like that. So just keep that in, in mind. It's not going to be different sounds. So here's what my uh, mine looks like populated. I'm going to open it up. I have dragged in three kick sounds, three snare sounds, and two hi-hat sounds. So my suggestion here would be to add more sounds, like add a few kick sounds, add a few snare sounds, add a few hi-hat sounds, and I'm going to show you why in just a little bit. So as I'm adding these sounds, how do I know if they're good, right? Well, there's one principal question I use when it comes to choosing the right sounds for my drums personally, and it's just do the drums fit the genre you're working with? For instance, there are a lot of kick drums in Logic that are purposely meant for electronic music and not necessarily soft rock. For example, if you're looking for a kick drum and it sounds foreign to you or you're not really sure what it should sound like, try going back to the stem splitter tool and listen specifically to the sound of the kick drum and try to reference that sound and find a kick that sounds like that in Logic. For most of the songs I produce, I only use a small list of kick and snare sounds. Call me crazy, but once you find something good, like the sample library I have, I just keep on using that. So this leads us on now to the few final steps to creating punchy and authentic drums. So step five, now we need information, MIDI information to use for our custom drum kit. So from a Logic Pro drummer track, like a yellow one, uh, and maybe you've, uh, you've created a pattern that you like from using the follow, button and the humanize and dynamics um, options that we were talking about. Let's say it's, we like this pattern. So we're gonna actually convert this to MIDI information and, and use it. So step five is actually right clicking on this yellow track and go to convert to MIDI region. If it's not here, you can find it under convert, convert to MIDI region here. And now I have MIDI data for that track. So step six is actually, we just drag this MIDI information to our custom drum kit. So mine's the Indie Country kit here. So I'm gonna just click it and drag it down to this track. Now, literally, it, I, I have this, I just have the pattern there with my samples. I can just press play and, and listen. So that's the same pattern. If I go back up here, drag it back to my scientific method, which is the logic sounds, I can press play. Same pattern, right? Different sounds. Going back to Indie uh, Country Kit here, different sounds, same pattern. 
this is a great kind of learning point for you in Logic is that MIDI is separate from the, the sound itself. So you can use any MIDI information and attach that to any sound. Listen to this. So if this didn't work for you, here's why. And here's what you're gonna to wanna to check on. Um, you will wanna check on the input, the MIDI input of your drum machine designer, your custom kit. So open up this, the DMD, the, your custom drum kit, and look at the pads here and what the input information is. So you see how it says, if I hover over kick one, it says input C1. Well, I need it to say C1 because that's the, the MIDI input, right? And let me explain here in a second. So um, let me just drag this back up to the scientific method kit. I'm gonna open the editor and you're gonna see this and how it works. So you can see C1 down here, C1. And notice that's the kick, and then that's the kick sound. This actually, see it says kick. And the snare is on C, what is that? C sharp, I guess? Yeah. And here's the hi-hats, here's the tom. So the Logic Pro drummer tracks, all the, all the elements have different MIDI inputs or outputs. So the kick is C1. So if I want this MIDI information, if I'm gonna drag down the same MIDI information to a different track, I need to make sure that those notes, those MIDI notes, these inputs are lined up correctly. So C1 for the kick and C sharp for uh, the snare. So I can go to my indie country kit or your custom drum kit and just make sure that those things are, are lined up correctly. So let's see here again, we have C1 and then C sharp one. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this back and this leads us to another problem now. How do we know um, if those drums are sounding good or right? Or if they're, if they're working, um, this is why we dragged in more samples. This is why I dragged in three kick options and three stair, snare options. I could have dragged in more as well. But the cool thing in here is because I did drag in more options, I can open up my editor by pressing E and I can go to my MIDI information here. And you can see I have my kick sounds here. So I can just click and highlight all these kicks and press option down arrow on my keyboard and just audition another kick sound. This is what kick two sounds like. And press the and press play. Okay, now I can go option down again, and I'm on uh, kick three. I guess I just named that wrong. So I, I can audition kick three. The same thing. I can go back up to kick kick one. I can look at different snares. Go option up arrow. So these are all snares that work within the genre of my indie country element here that I'm just producing. And I can now pick and choose different sounds that might work together. And I can also, if I just have to scrap it again and go back to the, the sample library or pick new sounds, you might have to do that. But this just gives you the speed and flexibility right within the MIDI editor to choose different samples. Now, most people are gonna give up here because it just takes way too much work, right? But when you do the next step, it can literally save you a lot of time so you don't have to do this all over again. So on your custom drum kit here, go to the, the left li library in Logic and go down to save, and click save. So save this drum kit as anything you like. Let's say uh, you rock, baby, don't, you damn quit. You're awesome. Okay. Maybe something shorter than that, but whatever. That's cool. Now, every time you start a new Logic project, you're making a song within a similar genre like this. You just go to track, new software instrument track, go over to your user patches here, where it says under the classic electric piano, user patches. And there you go. You rock, baby. Don't. Don't you damn quit. You're awesome. Now, this opens up our next problem, which is selecting the right sounds to layer on your new drums. And a huge part about leveling up your production is choosing sounds. So watch this video here, and I'm gonna show you three production tips that'll help you get out of that beginner sounding stage. Trust me, I've been there and I know how it feels, so this video is gonna be great for you.